You can't look at anything but your diet. You can look at your stressors. You can look at the, the toxic chemistry from pollution. Absolutely, you can look at those factors. Absolutely. What you eat, what you drink, what you breathe, and what you put on your skin. But when you bring this ash into the blood, remember the blood is 7.4. It is on the base side of chemistry. When you bring this digestive ash absorbed into the blood, then you're going to see the fluctuation of pHs. The blood must maintain this, this narrow margin of pHs. So assume you're eating a, a piece of animal meat. Whether it's raw or cooked, doesn't matter. The ash is predominantly phosphorus, nitrogen. This ash is predominantly acidic. And this is true with most grains. This is true with most beans, things like this, nuts. The ash is acidic. Well, the problem with this is the blood is on the base side. So when you bring this acid ash into the blood, what does the blood have to do to maintain its alkalinity? Because if not, death is the end result of that. ER looks very closely at the, at the pHs, and the pH of blood is essential to know of that patient. And so as you see the short variances of changes of blood, you see blood clots forming. You see sticking of the blood cells uh, together. If you look at most blood samples, you have red blood cells stuck together, clustering or following each other like choo-choo trains. And it's that variances of pH which create either an anionic or a cationic environment. So it's, un, it's important to understand that when you bring in this acid ash, that balance, that movement of, uh, of homeostasis has to exist. It's a law of physics. It's how the universe is ran. And so this, this law of homeostasis has a need to pull in base chemistry to balance out acid chemistry because acids neutralize base and base neutralizes acids. Where we find this at the greatest insult is the use of chemotherapy where the body has become predominantly acidic and they add hotter acids to the mix. What you see is pure destruction of the cells. And this is allowed on this planet. This is how barbaric the FDA is. This is how barbaric oncology is. And they're going to pay. You can't keep going this route. It's, it's an offense to chemistry. It's an offense to man's knowledge. It's, it's an offense to all of this. You don't bring in acids, more acids, into a highly acidic medium without creating more problems because you're bringing corrosive chemistry in on top of corrosive chemistry. There is no homeostasis available. And because that's happening, the need for electrolytes is high. And so what you see is dehydration because all this, this acidic ash has through the generations damaged the colon. There's been study after study linking high protein diets to colon cancer. Can't deny that one. And then what they're not looking at and what soon is on the horizon, thanks to every one of you guys and to some great medical doctors out there are getting involved with this, you're going to see the role of the kidneys and the failure of the kidneys and what we're up against, same proteins. It's, and you just see it when you go on high-protein diets. Just observe people on a high-protein diet. Look at the Atkins effect. Death, open hearts, strokes. You know, God created this whole world in uh, chemical harmony and chemical relationships. And I've brought this up so many times. That the fact that all chemistry is related. Remember, this is a finished, created universe. You can't, you can't play with chemistry by, here, you want more calcium? Here's a bunch of calcium. What we, what we don't think and what we don't see, and unless you've had physics, what you don't understand is that when you bring high amounts of calcium as a supplement into your body, creation's finished. So you're bringing a lot of calcium. Who has to leave? Think of, think of chemistry as a room literally crammed full of people. This is the best analogy I can give you, that a room full of people, and you want to come into that room because you have a friend in that room full of people. What has to happen? What has to happen to that room full of people? Somebody's got to step out so somebody can step in. So look at chemistry as complete in the universe. It's all, there's no voids. 
So you see that osmosis, you know, where there's a buildup of chemistry on one side and low on the other. You will always see the waxing and waning of chemistry, you know, how, how we have osmosis, uh, how we have um, all, all the chemical processes and how they work actually. So you, you move from one dense to less dense. It's always seeking a homeostasis, a balance of chemistry, a balance of magnetics, all this movement of, of life between the fluxing of the two poles, whether it's electrons around protons, uh, negative around positive, well, however you wish to look at all of that. So you cannot bring in calcium without pushing out something. And you always push out the sister, the twin sister to calcium is magnesium. You also tend to push out the little brother, phosphorus, which is part of the bone matrix. So you, 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 you can't do that. Same thing with vitamins. Same thing with everything. You get plenty of vitamins from bacteria in the body unless you're high on antibiotics. And that will destroy your uh, vitamin uh, production in the body.